here then is we've kind of covered the notification, but we get down to if the ERs are not available to cover the increased usage, what do we do? Yeah. And <laughs> what I have said that the individual cases will be brought before the board and reviewed with legal counsel to determine if a cease and desist situation exists or if there's another alternative. I think we just have to handle them at this point. And hopefully, <laughs> um, I just know that the one account that has been transferring these continually among his business entities, he has a lot of ERs. Um, the other issue that I came up with that I talked to Jesse about, um, and that's why we need the count of really what do they have occupied, reserved, and vacant is because we were not getting notification of increased usage even though we have increased their billing from time to time, their reserved ER count is still shown as it was 20 years ago. Well, we need to determine with Jesse's figures, hey, what has, should really have been adjusted out of their reserve usage because they can't, over the last 20 years, added 15 accounts and still have 35 reserved and vacant ERs. So that's part of the process of um, that you guys are going to give us the account. And then it's just a matter of numbers once we have the information. Yeah, and for all the commercial accounts, that's already been done on that original uh, sheet that I did. It has what we're currently billing them. No, I understand that. Oh, okay. But the problem is, like, and, and I I made notes and, and sent it to you. Yeah, I'm looking, looking at that. that. On the adjustments that Rich and Robin did, what they did is they just kept increasing the total number of ERs and never deducting anything from the reserved. So, yeah, that's what um, updating that um, Excel spreadsheet that Jan will do. Yes. Yeah. Basically, my, my spreadsheet that I created will just go right into. Um, what Jan did, and then we'll just do that for all the other accounts as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, absolutely. Okay, I think we've got that now. Um, uh, all right, number four is the issue of unpaid connection fees. So, in the perfect world, these people have come to us and they add in all of this stuff. And our rate schedule is per ER, and we have a $1,200 connection fee per ER. So, in the spirit, the way we've always talked about what we are going to do here is we will give these people a one-time forgiveness when we finally balance their usage and say, okay, from now on, this is how you assign these, and we're not going to be moving them around from account to account anymore. You can have every your in the business entity name, but you're not going to suddenly transfer them over to your other marina. It's going to stay where it is after this. So do we do the same thing with the 
connection fees? Are we going to give them a one-time forgiveness and say, okay, this is the past. We're going to get all of this straightened out. You owe us this much. As long as they agree going forward, they're going to pay for all of this new usage. We will not charge them for connection fees. Or do we impose connection fee charges? Are, 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 we, are we going to go, go back and say that they hold the monthly fees for the time that they hooked up? No, that's okay. something I know originally when um, Rich and Robin went to our former attorney Susan Weeks, she said we can go back three years and yeah. there was a lot of discussion about trying to do that. I do not and see any future in doing that. We, so it would just create a whole bunch of legal issues. Well, and, and, and with some of these we have no idea when they were hooked up. No, right. it, I know. Right. It, it would just yeah. be a bucket of worms. Yeah. So my feeling is, you know, the reason we're doing this is to get rate equity finally after all of these years. So if we have to, you know, forgive and move forward, at least we're going to have everything on our books and we're going to be getting income. Mm -hmm. That's the way I look at it. But I'm not the one that's making the decisions here. So I need you guys to tell me. The $1,200 connection fee, I I know this, but let's Mm -hmm. say it so it's all in the open. I mean, what is... What does the twelve hundred dollar connection fee pay for? It hooking up to our physically sewer line. Yes. Yes. No. 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 The the uh, twelve hundred. None of that. The the connection uh, fee. Josie, you have to tell me. No, Sean had it right. It's it's the cost for connecting into our sewer infrastructure. Physically. Yeah. Physically, yes. Then, okay, yeah, and see, and that's where if I want to, I want to have some neighborliness with with the businesses who want to move the yards around. I don't think a twelve hundred dollar connection fee is right unless well, <clears throat> we if they move, we need to know if they move a connection from here to here. I believe we need to know. It need through a permit and an inspection. Yes, yes. Whether they do it themselves, we need to be able to stamp an approval of inspection and, well, and notify. Wait a minute. Our ordinance does not permit them on a sewer side to do. Their okay, own, that's their why own. I said that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not because if it's if it was only if it was only going to be paper in the office of. Um, Assigning from this address to this address as such, I, I don't. I think twelve hundred dollars would be a little heavy, and it, I would want. I would want to allow businesses to do that. However, you also don't want to make it so, uh, so cheap that they're doing it all the time, causing a headache, and then spools up everybody in the office doing that type of detail work all the time. Well, and and, and that's for the one-time forgiveness. With those that have already done it, yes. I'm thinking further, yeah. you know, which we'll get into those yeah. codes and stuff. Uh, well, it's just difficult when people move things around. If we're, if they don't, tell, they should have to petition us to move it before they move it. Yes. Because there's no way we're going to have somebody out policing the area every day. It's we can. No, no. So I think that's something that we might want to consider as some kind of a permit to move one from one yeah, place to another place. Well, it yeah. has to go through the health department, doesn't it? Depends on what was there before and what's going in now. I mean, there's already a tank set there, but it just hasn't been hooked up. You don't have to go back through the health department. So. New connections are permitted solely through the district. If a customer within our district boundaries goes to Panhandle Health, Panhandle Health says that they have no permitting uh Regulation over them, and they they send them to us. 
Okay. Okay. That cuts down the paperwork down. Okay. So the issue we we have here then that has come to light is in the new ordinance we have required just to stop all of this <laughs> so that we don't have somebody that we're billing for 11 that is using 20 ERs is they now going forward have got to permit increased usage. So if they add an ER, they have to come in here and get a permit. So if it is a case where they are going to use a reserved ER that they have and they are not going to do a new connection. And when I say connection, I'm meaning the connection that you normally make when you have to do the digging and you come in and you're going to actually make a connection into our system. Most of the accounts that we're looking at now, that connection is being made on the other side. But from the tank to our line is our fee and responsibility. Right. Right. And so we are going to have to come up with something as far as how we're going to handle these increased usage, Jesse, where the connection is on their side. Yeah, and it appears that, you know, we haven't really incurred any costs on these because, well, we weren't aware of them, so we didn't pay for anything for them to go and dig from their tank to our line. So right. that's something for you guys to think about in this decision. Oh, yeah. If, mm -hmm. if they've gone and hooked up themselves because mm -hmm. they have a reserve or, or, or whatever and they've taken care of it, we are liable. Yeah, I think at that point it becomes maybe not to charge a connection fee, but a violation fee. Well, yeah, that I mean yeah. that, that that's why we're we're doing all this. But I I just want to make sure, and we can put it on our agenda, is that because our new ordinance requires a permit now for increased usage, we need to decide this so that you guys know when somebody comes in the office and say, well, I have this ER, I've already, you know, I'm going to connect it on my side. There's no cost to you uh, what we're going to do with that. Yeah, and I'll make this comment, which has nothing to do with money, but I think at the very least um, with all of these connections, um, and it's going to be fun for the person who has, you know, another 21 connections that we don't have documented in the office, but they, we need paperwork for all each and every one of those connections. So that doesn't have anything to do on the money side, but definitely we need to say, Hey, here's 21 new permits. Um, and each one of those additional ones needs to have a, mm -hmm. a permit. Mm -hmm. Yep. They do. And we'll, yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll probably charge some kind of, you know, administration uh, fee. Maybe. I know a lot of that stuff I did in the where we require that we charge two hundred dollars. But this is something we'll decide at the board level. But we we need to do that. Yeah. If so if it's a new construction, something new that's coming online. Uh, the plumb they have to pull a plumbing permit from the state, and the plumbing inspector is responsible for the line from the house to the tank. So that part of it should be inspected. Well, see, what these are, Bob, is, is, you know, they're on the marinas. We all mm -hmm. know that. And they have their own system within a system. So what they're doing, because it saved them a lot of money, is they just add these on their, their side of the connection. So it doesn't. Yeah, we, we don't know about it, but the plumbing inspector still should. If, it's, if they're building a new flow zone, they've got to pull a permit for it. 
Uh, it's got to go into a tank. Yeah, it's on a sand electrical inspector, or a safety inspector. Yeah, it goes into. Uh, 